Here is a source exercise for you. You design or illustrate A. You meant to design or illustrate A. Your client wanted you to design or illustrate A. What if your target audience does not see A, but instead they read it as Z? Are your target audience at fault? How can interpretation be semiotically centered in design and illustration? Let's discuss this more fully. In the last episode, I began to discuss Pierce's other triadic relationships to how meaning is perceived and therefore interpreted. In the next episode, we will begin to re-examine Pierce's 10 classifications of semiotic science. The sign power of each of these 10 signs from simple to complex is predicated on three triadic interrelationships I have identified this season. We know semiosis is predicated on the determination flow between the concept, its representation, and then its interpretation. How the concept is represented is powered by iconic, indexical, and symbolic representation. How it is perceived and interpreted is powered as a ream, a dissent, or an argument. More on these next episode. Semiosis's final triad is the power of how the representation is delivered. We can call this a sign vehicle. The quality sign is the most basic delivery of the semiotic representation to the audience. Quality sign is ephemeral. It is a quality and nothing more. Well, not quite. It is a quality that can be weakly meaning bearing. It is on the edge of perception, on the periphery of consciousness, which vanishes when perceived. What I mean is, contextually, a quality can semiotically kickstart communication of meaning through a perception it is familiar. Quick caveat, we are discussing semiotic science and not signage, okay? Good, because I am about to reference signage here. In danger signage, the colour red is often used as social culturally we identify red with danger. Red is red. In other contexts, red can mean many other things. In danger signage, the application of red evokes a sense of danger. That is a quality sign. The next two semiotic sign vehicle levels are a sin sign and a legi sign. In episode 3.6, I promised to unpack these two terms, so here we are, eight episodes later. A synth sign is the middle level of delivering the semiotic sign, and legislation is the highest level. By examining the roots in each level, quali, sin, and legi sign, we can see the perception levels. A quali sign is in the perception state of firstness, a state of possibilities, familiarities, and resemblances. A synth sign is in the perception state of secondness, a state of probabilities, proposals, and mediation. A legi sign is in the perception state of thirdness, a state of generality of agreements and interpretation. A synth sign is a one-off delivery of meaning bearing. A legi sign is more of a generally agreed delivery. Sin as in single, legi as in law. Think on this. Quali as in quality, sin as in single, legi as in law. Those of you who are Semiosis 101 regulars will already be aware that semiotic signs are not tangible things, but are encoded meaning being. Therefore, in one moment, a semiotic sign can be dormant and in the next, active. A semiotic sign can be unperceived and then perceived. In context A, a blob can be perceived as an animal ear, but in context B, a blob can be a leg or a plane or a skyscraper or anything. The quality of a blob may semiotically suggest an ear or a leg, but a blob is a blob. Its shape may change, suggesting other qualities. These quality science suggestions are weak and interpretations can be varied. A shape of an eye has a round quality. To visually communicate an eye, different shapes are used to suggest iris, cornea, pupil, reflections, etc. Different color qualities are used to suggest eye variations and composition of these shapes suggest where the eye is looking. These are just shapes, independent of whatever technique is used to visualize them. These shapes in different configurations can visualize lots of other things too. Can you see where I'm going with this? In one configuration, these various shapes define an eye. This is what Pierce defines as a synth sign. 
The individual shapes that could also form any other things if configured differently form a single element in an image or as an image or as a graphic to visually communicate an eye. A sin sign, a single sign vehicle delivering the representation of the concept of an eye. A sin sign which helps the interpreter to interpret an eye. So if a quality sign is a sign vehicle which is an ephemeral semiotic meaning being quality and a sin sign is a single use sign vehicle which is used to visually communicate a thing, then what is a legi sign? Pierce is quite careful in how he defines a legi sign. A legi sign is a law that is a sign. This law is usually established by people. Every conventional sign is a legi sign. It is not a single object, but a general type, which it has been agreed shall be significant. A general type which has been agreed? Persian scholar Professor Tony Jappy describes a legi sign as depending largely upon personal experience of the world and collateral, that is independent, knowledge of the concept determining the sign. Consider what you all already know and apply that to legi signs. What do I mean by that? Peirce uses familiar terms such as law and argument when trying to name what semiotically and perceptually happens at the point of interpretation. He is making a specific philosophical and logical point, but again, his terminology is nothing more than obtuse to the creative late person. We will look at this highest level of triadic sign action in the same way we explored the lowest in episode 3.5. The highest of Pierce's 10 semiotic sign classification utilizes symbolic representation and arguments and is a legi sign. We already know symbolic representation employs visual generalities. We know an argument in Persian terms is nothing more than a general agreement. Can you see where I'm going with this? A legi sign is a general expected way of experiencing the semiotic visual communication. Eh? Let me make you more comfortable with this. What is a logo? Yes, yes, it represents a brand, an organization, a business, etc. But what is a logo? We all feel we know what a logo is. So when we see a single graphic mark or a shape, initials, etc., we are happy to assume it could be a logo. Every logo is different. They look different. But we still know each one is a logo. Logos are meaning bearing. They convey meaning through a simple visual identity. Logos deliver much more meaning once recognized as such that on its own, it cannot visually bear. Can you see where I'm going with this? Apply that same thinking to Pierce's legi sign. Am I saying a logo is a legi sign? Let us not get bogged down in analogy. As I stated in season two, episode 2.1, semiotic signs are not signage, but signage uses semiotics. I'm just trying to reset your perceptual thinking here. A legi sign is just a delivery method for the semiotic sign. If a quality is a weak and ephemeral meaning bearing vehicle, quality sign, and a single configuration of shapes, marks, etc., is a one off meaning bearing vehicle, since sign, then a legi sign is a generally accepted sign vehicle that the target audience will expect. A logo is just one example of how legi signs are experienced without thinking. Also, consider other things you do not notice, such as wayfinding or the app screen on your devices or in the analog world, the expectation of where to open a packet. Everything you design or illustrate has visual communication embedded within it. The meaning bearing visual elements should lead to the intended meaning and not against it. The managing of perception is how semiosis aids you creatives. In design, we can describe what and how we design through a variety of different theoretical lenses. This episode just helps you frame how semiotic sign action can also benefit your successes through mindfully considering interpretation. We expanded on how semiotic representation can be delivered through three sign vehicles of quality science, sin science and legi science. We will return to these next week when we will spend three episodes exploring in more detail Pierce's 10 semiotic sign classifications. Oh, simple, too complex. You will gain a clearer understanding how all of Pierce's three triads of sign action power interplay to enhance your visual communication skills. Thanks for watching. 
check out the other semi Usus 101 episodes, like and share them with your friends. And hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's free Semiosis 101 episode is published. You can also follow Semiosis 101 on the socials for updates. It is at Semiosis 101 on Instagram and threads. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.